Hey guys, this is Will from Boosted Media. Now, Mozza Racing have asked us to put together a bit of a settings guide for Assetto Corsa Competizione on PC for their entire range of current wheelbases. So the R5, the R9, the R16, and the R21. Now, we're gonna be focusing primarily on the R9 today, but I will take you through a couple of tips for minor adjustments that you can make to these baseline settings for suiting the various different wheelbases within the range, depending on what you have. So before we get started here today, I just wanna preface this by saying that this is quite a subjective topic. Topic. The personal preferences that you have for how you like your steering wheel to feel may be a little bit different from what I like. What we're going to try and establish here is a nice baseline that you can fine tune and tweak to your own personal preference from. There's a few fundamentals which I think are really important to, I guess, getting the fundamentals of what a car should feel like communicated through the steering wheel. So you want to get as much information that is pertinent to the feeling and the sensation of what the car's doing through the steering wheel, but you don't want to go over the top to the point where you're just getting noise through there and you're actually, you know, overloading your senses and not able to actually feel what the car's doing. So that is the objective today. And as I said, we're gonna be starting off with the R9 here and I'll give you a few tips for the other wheelbases as we go through. So jumping into the Mozza Pit House software, first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that you've got the software and the firmware upgraded on all of your hardware. And there's plenty of other videos available on that topic. So I'm gonna assume that you've already done that. So starting off on the home tab, we've got our steering wheel maximum angle and our game force feedback intensity adjustment. So I'd recommend for ACC specifically a rotation or steering angle of 540 degrees. If you increase that, what's gonna happen is it's gonna become less sensitive. So you're gonna to have to turn the wheel more to correlate with the same amount in the game. For ACC, 540 is about one to one. So you can experiment with that if you're finding it's a little bit out. Make sure you also set the in-game adjustment to 540 degrees as well. And I'll show you that a little bit later on in today's video. Uh, then game force feedback intensity. This is gonna depend on how strong you are and of course what base you're running as well. So for the R5 and the R9, I would recommend running this at 100% for ACC. If you're running an R16, you may end up wanting to crank this down a little bit. If you're running an R21, you may want to crank it down a little bit more as well. I find around sort of 11 to 13 Newton meters is where I sit if I'm running the more powerful bases. But having said that, I think the R9 does generate enough torque here. If you're running an R5, you're definitely going to want this at 100% though, just to make sure that you're making full use of all the torque that's available there. So we're going to set that to 100% for now, and we're going to move down to our wheelbase settings now. So if you've only recently updated your firmware, you'll notice a couple of things have moved around here, but the basic fundamentals are still the same. We now just have a new miscellaneous tab, which moves a couple of the controls across from where they used to be. Now under miscellaneous, you really don't need to change anything here to influence the driving experience. Really all this soft limit stiffness thing does is adjust how stiff the wheelbase feels when you reach the end of the software limited rotation. So we set it to 540 degrees. You can see there when I rotate it past that, it's got quite a soft bump stop. If I set that too hard, then it feels a lot more solid when you hit that end point. So it just depends on what you personally like the feeling of. Uh, most cars in real life have a relatively soft bump stop at the end. You get a little bit of squish there. So I think the soft setting feels a little bit more authentic, at least for the cars that I've driven in the past. So we're gonna jump back to basic settings now. There are a bunch of presets here for various different types of driving, obviously ACC being GT style, and you can also load or export presets here too. So if you find a really sweet set of settings, you wanna send them across to a mate or your league mates or something like that, you can do all that in here too. So maximum steering angle, exactly the same as what we saw before. We have an adjustment here for synchronous or asynchronous mode here, and that basically just allows us to adjust what the game interprets as our steering angle versus versus where that mechanical bump stop or that software based mechanical bump stop sits. But for the purpose of ACC, I would recommend just setting both of those to 540 degrees. Road sensitivity, this is the strength of the force feedback for effects on the road, so bumps, things like that. For ACC, I set it to a level of nine. You can experiment around that point, but if you crank it down too low, you're just gonna find the wheelbase is gonna feel quite dull when you're driving. Gain force feedback intensity, this is like a uh, an attenuation for the signal coming out of the game. And we'll talk about the gain force feedback settings a little bit later on, but I would recommend having this set to 100% for the R5 or the R9. If you're running a more powerful wheelbase, you may end up wanting to crank this down a little bit, but again, that's just gonna be a personal preference thing and you can experiment with that and and uh, yeah, tune it to your heart's content. Maximum wheel speed, this is how quickly the wheel is able to respond to different types of inputs. So if you've got a sudden twitch or something
something like that, how quickly the wheel can accelerate in your hands. For ACC, I have this set to 70%. If you're doing something like drifting where you really need to spin the wheel quickly, uh, you may want to crank that up. If you're driving just casual street cars, you may want to wind it down a little bit, but for ACC, 70 is good. Wheel spring strength, we don't need to worry about this setting for ACC. This is basically just a setting which uh, returns the wheel to the center position like a mechanical spring would uh, for games that don't implement that inside their force feedback signal. So we don't need it for ACC. Wheel damper setting, this along with a couple of other settings that we'll find in advanced settings in just a moment, kind of work together to create the sensation of weight behind the steering wheel, that kind of dampened effect like the steering wheel is actually connected to something in the car mechanically. Now, most games, including ACC, do have some level of dampening integrated into their force feedback. So this is like a filter that runs over the top of that. So for ACC, again, I find that about 40% feels good to me. But if you're feeling that the steering feels a little bit numb, you may want to crank this down. If you're feeling that it feels a little bit too rigid for you, maybe, or a little bit too robotic or clunky, then you can wind this up to your personal preference. So we're going to jump across to advanced settings now. Uh, maximum torque limit. Again, if you're running an R5 or an R9, you're probably going to leave this set to 100%. For an R16 or an R21, you may want to wind it down just a touch, maybe to 80% or 50% for the R21, depending. So this is a little bit different from the game adjustment that we were looking at just before. What this does is it sets a hard cap at the top of the range so that the wheelbase won't ever generate effects that are any stronger than that. So what you'll find is with say the R16 and the R21, for example, you might have the force feedback feeling absolutely perfect, but then when you crash into a wall, it's too strong and it's actually gonna you know, try and tear the wheel out of your hands. What you can do is you can limit that maximum output torque here to, uh, to account for that. Now, again, I would kind of argue that if you're buying an R16 or an R21, you want to take full advantage of all the dynamic range that's available there. So for most people, I wouldn't recommend adjusting this, but if it is just too strong for you, or if you've got maybe kids that are driving your rig occasionally, you may want to consider cranking this down just to make things a little bit safer. Hands-off protection, this is an important one to have switched on. I would definitely recommend that you do so. What this does is it disables the wheelbase when you take your hands off the wheel, so it stops it from oscillating and doing crazy things like that or potentially injuring you. So if you're in a crash, take your hands off the wheel, force feedback will cut out. Now steering wheel inertia, this is like a, uh, a counter adjustment for the weight and mounting point of the particular steering wheel that you're using. So you can see a few presets here for the various different wheels that Mozza have in their range. We have the FSR steering wheel connected here, which defaults to 1100 here. So I actually prefer to run that a little bit higher, but again, it's purely a personal preference thing. So experiment with that and find what feels good to you. Now, natural inertia kind of works in hand with that as well, along with the damper setting that we saw earlier. It gives you that sensation of, again, the wheel being connected mechanically to a steering rack. So it gives you the sensation as you turn the wheel of the wheel kind of wanting to continue along that path. Wheel friction works hand in hand with this too. So this is the amount of mechanical resistance that you feel as you turn the wheel. And again, these are both filters that run over the top of the signal coming out of the game. So for ACC specifically, I like the natural inertia to sit around 200% and wheel friction at 20%. Again, you can fine tune these, but I find that the wheel starts to feel a little bit more robotic outside of that general range. Speed dependent dampening. This is purely just a damper that is applied to the output of the steering wheel, depending on how fast you're going in the game. I set that to 60 with a starting point of 90 kilometers an hour. Again, you can tweak that to however you like. And then we go across to our force feedback equalizer. So this allows us to fine tune how the wheel responds to various different frequencies within the dynamic range available. Now we don't have any adjustment for Q here, so we can't adjust the width of the area that we're adjusting, so to say. But what we can do is choose from each of these frequency ranges and it gives us a little description of what kinds of effects we're feeling within that frequency range at each point. So this is how I've got it set up. 100% output for our 10 Hertz range, which is body bumps, bumping over curbs, things like that. Ripple strip or curb effects, so running over those rumble strips, I boost up to 120%. ABS vibration at 200%, I do like to have that real sensation of what the car is doing under brakes. Uh, grass effects around the 190 mark, but again, you can fine tune it. And then for sand effects, when we run off track, we wanna really get a strong sensation of the car being off the track. So I've got that boosted up to 230%. So that's everything in terms of settings for the pit house software. Let's jump now into ACC and I'll show you the settings that I use there. Okay, so inside ACC, we're gonna to go to options. We're gonna to go to controls. 
and there's just a couple of things that you're gonna to wanna to set up here. Now, obviously, the mapping of the controls is pretty self-explanatory, so I'm not gonna take you through all that. Most of the controls are already written on the wheel, depending on which wheel you have, and obviously it will depend on which wheel you have, how you wanna map the controls anyway. But what we're interested in here for today's video is the force feedback settings here. So we set our gain to 90%. That's just to avoid any clipping in the signal coming out of the game. Generally, what I recommend is leave that set at 90 and make adjustments in the pit house software if you're not liking how things are feeling, rather than adjusting things here, if you adjust it down inside the game, you're limiting the output signal, which the pit house software will see. You're never gonna be able to get beyond that. So minimum force and dampening, we leave those both set to zeros. As I understand it, these are kind of like multipliers on top of the base signal. So 0% doesn't mean that those functions aren't actually doing anything. And uh, yeah, it just feels best to me at 0% uh, setting. Dynamic dampening, leave that set to 100%. Road effects, again, can sit on zero. Frequency, now this is one of the really great things about a set of course of competition. We have a really high sample rate for our force feedback. So we wanna set this as high as we possibly can, which at the moment at least is 400 hertz. That means it's gonna be refreshing and updating the signal 400 times per second, as opposed to the 60 times a second that we get in iRacing, for example. So 400 hertz there, you're gonna find it feels a lot more granular and a lot more detailed than if you crank it down. If you are finding it's a little bit too sharp and over the top, you could turn it down, but I would generally recommend using filters on top of the 400 hertz signal rather than winding that down. Now under advanced, just make sure you set your steering lock to the same setting that we had inside pit house. So in this case, 540 degrees. And in all the other settings here, you shouldn't need to touch, should be one, one, 50 milliseconds, and manufacturers extras enabled. Now the last thing you just gonna to wanna to quickly do before you call it a day is jump into the sim itself. And what we wanna do is just quickly make sure that our force feedback isn't clipping at all. So you'll see on the overlay in the bottom right hand corner of your screen, the little FF bar, and you can see when I turn the wheel, that lights up gray. And what we're gonna do is drive out on track very quickly. And just make sure that when we're driving under normal conditions, that's not getting up and maxing out in the red zone. So just driving down the road and whatnot over bumps, we shouldn't see it going too crazy. If we go out on the grass, we'll see it bounce up. What we wanna make sure is that it's not maxing out and clipping. So when we get to the end of the straight here, we'll go up on the ripple strips. We'll give it a little bit of a bounce. Go up over here. Now I'm gonna deliberately go across these curves because I wanna see what happens. You can see there, it's not maxing out, it's not clipping. So it looks all good. Now, if you are getting a little tiny bit of clipping when you're doing things like bashing into a wall, for example, that's fine because that's not gonna impact the actual driving experience. It doesn't matter. And you wanna be taking advantage of as much dynamic range as you possibly can while you're on the track. You don't wanna be limiting that just to stop yourself from clipping in something like an accident where the force feedback doesn't really matter. So as long as you're not clipping when you're actually driving around the track, bumping over ripple strips and whatnot, you should be absolutely fine. And that is that. So I hope this video has helped you guys out. If it has, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment down below as well, and let us know whether these match your settings, whether these settings helped you. And thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you again soon. Bye.